and welcome to a mildly quirky edition of Ben's Junk. In other words, basically your average Ben's Junk. And yes, I realize it's sacrilegious for me to call Ben's Junk average. Anyway, stupid jokes aside, here's uh, the subject of today's episode. Yet another cable box, pay TV box, just generically speaking, in in this case, over-the-air pay TV. But uh, yeah, I'll discuss this a little more in just a bit. This is a box to be used with the Wilmetco Home Theater service, which existed from 1977 to 85. But I, I always like to give a little backstory with this stuff, my own backstory. So for whatever strange reason, I've just been on this ridiculous hot streak over the last year or so with these, generically speaking, pay TV boxes. And not only is this the latest in the line, but I just forgot about it. If you want an indicator of how off the rails my life has gone in recent months, I apparently bought this back in like late September and I just don't remember doing it. I found the receipt for it. But another one of these came up on Fleabay for auction just within the last month as of my making this, and I actually bid on it, having completely forgotten about this unit. It's still in its original box, no less, from the early 80s. But uh, I did not win that uh, auction, and apologies to whoever did win it for however much I drove the price up, but I guess it doesn't matter, because there were two other people interested and they got into a real bidding war at the end and I had bowed out well before that so yeah I may have jacked up the price a little but not too bad not as bad as the ridiculous amounts I saw the final two people going at this thing for or the other unit that is so anyway um I have discussed Wometco home theater before on archive I've done two episodes on non-cable pay TV, over-the-air pay TV, and this is covered in the second one, which I did in 2019, I believe, and this has always been kind of high on the list of boxes that I wanted to find because, I, as far as I know at least, this is the only one of those providers, if you will, that had a speaker built in to the Discrambler box and you would watch your show through a built-in speaker. Uh, And I mean that they did it for the entire run. There are others like on TV that did it in maybe just certain markets or only did it for a year or two. But as far as I know, the only ones that were kind of hardcore about it were Wometco Home Theater. So even though I did a history lesson in that second non-cable pay TV episode, just for the sake of completeness, I'll just kind of quick run down the whole thing again here. Uh, This launched in 1977 on, I forget the call letters, but it became WWHT. Take a wild guess what those last three letters were for. And it was uh, really intended to serve... Long Island and that general area and over time it expanded out more throughout the if you will New York City metropolitan area so the five boroughs a little bit into New Jersey and I think into one little corner of Connecticut as well so at its peak we'll say 1980 to 82 the whole thing had expanded out to four channels Now, and they were all simulcasting. So WWHT was the main one, Channel 68, and I have another part of another episode on Channel 68, uh, the one on the box, the one on non-cable music video channels. So uh, yeah, 68 kind of had a history. But uh, yeah, initially it was, uh, well, for the heart of its run at least, was... Wometco Home Theater. It expanded out to channel 67 and then it got a couple of translators in there and that actually factors into this unit but I'll get back to that. So anyway this particular unit was made in May of 1980 and as best as I can deduce 
1980, the installation for this was $85, and then you paid $20 a month for the service. And, of course, you're still over the air, so you're still kind of at the mercy of your reception. But, uh, yeah, you, you can put those numbers into the inflation calculator if you want to put that in perspective. But anyway, uh, these would also, like most of these non-cable pay TV companies, the, they would come out and in the installation, they would also give you a tuned antenna. And so, you know, for maximum reception for that particular channel. Obviously, those antennas have lost, been lost to time for the most part. None of the boxes that I've accrued had the antenna to go with them. But anyway, uh, the whole thing kept going for a while, largely because there was just no cable TV yet in most of, again, for lack of a better term, Metro New York. But it still kind of faded out, and as the five boroughs and everybody started to get cable, it became more and more of a losing proposition. And for whatever strange reason, Wometco did eventually go into cable TV, but they did it kind of later on, and they didn't do that great a job at it. So it just kind of faded away. So in 1984, Wometco merged with Select TV, and it just became a simulcast of Select TV. And I've covered that box before, so yeah, I've, I've got a whole series on these things now. And then in 85, the whole thing just quietly went away, and then Channel 68 became U68, which I covered in that episode on uh, music video channels. So, yeah, there's your history. Now, on a technical level, there really isn't that much to this. Uh, this is basically an, an on-TV box all over again, just with audio built in, or uh, one of the audio variants of an on-TV box. So we got two knobs here. We got a hybrid power and volume button. This is not plugged in at the moment. But if it were, you might hear a hum coming out of the speaker. And uh, from the tone of that hum, it, uh, I'm going to guess the sound quality was never very good in the first place. I'd be willing to bet heavily that the sound quality on my little consumer 13-inch TV on the fringe of the shot, the right fringe of the shot, is far, far, far better. But uh, alas, this speaker was the one thing that I couldn't really test. But I'll discuss that more later. The second knob is a fine tuning knob, which is irrelevant to me because all the tests I've done have been direct right into the unit, no antennas involved at all. And then we got to switch between regular TV and Wometco Home Theater. Now this will still pass a signal if the unit is off. As long as this is plugged in, it will still pass a signal. So that is something to keep in mind. I guess you could just leave it on all the time, come to think of it. But anyway, uh, let's take a quick cut here. I'll turn around to the back. It will not take us very long. And then we'll do as much of a demo as I can. And I will save some of the more quirky parts of the discussion for the demo because I think it's going to help if I've got the TV hooked up. Just for a lark, I've got all my cables hooked up to this thing, really just so you can see what it looks like in its final state, if you will. But having said that, there really is not much going on back here. And I should note, yes, I did attempt to open this, and I didn't quite succeed, but I was able to get in deep enough to get some pictures. So anyway, uh, the this is mostly held on with four screws, two on each side, but... The big stumbling block was this little rivet right in the center here. And I tried to pop it, tried to get it out, couldn't do it. I was starting to bend the frame of this and I didn't want to do this because I, I do like to keep these things for display purposes. But uh, yeah, I had to settle for kind of popping up the front as much as I could and just getting a good tight shot with my phone camera down into the guts of this thing. And... Uh, the only real surprise to me in there was what appeared to be, well, it was a computer chip, but uh, w appeared to be one that you'd see in a calculator uh, of this period. Otherwise, it was kind of what she expected, a whole lot of capacitors, and there was a, a tuning coil wrapped around sort of thing in there, you know, kind of what you would expect out of this. 
but on the outer part here, and yeah, I'll have to do a photo montage. Anyway, we've got the UHF input here on the right, and that's for the special antenna that you got with this that was tuned for whichever channel of uh, Wometco Home Theater was closest to you. And I'll just go ahead and discuss this now. Uh, there's a little sticker on here, and it says 67 and 3. So when I saw that, I figured, okay, this must be for the Channel 67 version of Wometco Home Theater. And of course, 3 would be, you know, just what you tune your normal TV to. It might have been at some point. Uh, it may have been 67 and then brought back to the factory and retuned. But as I received it, this is tuned for the smallest of, at its peak, four simulcasts of Wometco Home Theater, four channels that ran it simultaneously. And this would be the most obscure of them all. And that would be Channel 60, which was a translator, had the call letters, I had to write it down, uh, W60AI. And the little transmitter sat atop Tower number two of the World Trade Center. But in other words, this was meant for somebody right in the heart of New York City. And I don't know why that seems strange to me. I just can't picture, you know, somebody really right in the middle of New York City having Wometco Home Theater. To me, it seems like a, a Long Island or a Queens sort of thing. But uh, yeah, you could get it there. And obviously somebody did. It took me a while to figure out what was going on. I had to kind of play around with my channel modulator to figure out where things were coming through. But uh, yeah. Otherwise, we got our other antenna input here. And it's only screw terminals for the VHF one. So I had to put a matching transformer in there. Otherwise, we got the output to the TV. Everything is RF, there's no composite video, no goodies really at all, uh, unless you want to count the spare outlet that was kind of common at the time, non-polarized, two-prong outlet, non-polarized, non-grounded outlet. Otherwise, that's all there is to say about the back of this thing. So let me take one more cut here. I'll get this hooked up to the TV and a couple of VCRs, and I will show this in action as much as I can. Well, this could be a very interesting segment to try and shoot. Uh, I've got everything up and running right now, but I can't even begin to fit everything into the shot. So the main stuff in the shot is the most important stuff. We got just a consumer 13-inch CRT TV here, this little Philips Magnavox from sometime in the 2000s. We've got the Wometco box, and we've got a channel modulator. That's the important stuff. 
So what I've got going are two VHS decks for the broadcasting end of things. And why VHS? Because I'm the Oddity Archive guy. And on those VHS decks, uh, since my friend Gino Cuddy is starting up his Western Wednesdays column again, and I do enjoy reading it, and I always read it when he does post them, since he's starting it again, uh, I'm, I got a couple of Westerns, cheap public domain Westerns going on my VCRs right now. And uh, yeah, if you're into like poverty row Westerns and stuff, uh, it's, uh, it's a good read. And I'll, if I remember, I'll add a pinned comment with a link. But anyway, yeah, in honor of that, two cheap, crappy public domain Westerns, one in color, one in black and white, so we know easily what's what. And let's just try and break this down here. So for we got two broadcasts going on at once, if you will. Uh, No actual broadcasting is taking place. Everything's a direct feed. But uh, for our would-be normal free-to-air TV... We got just my Daily Driver RCA VHS deck, and that's got the color movie. And then for the would-be Wometco broadcast, we got one of my JVC transfer decks going. That one is black and white. And for everything to land on the proper channel for the would-be Wometco end of things, I've got that JVC, which is lurking down in the back of the shot somewhere, if you can see it at all. Uh, That is running to this channel modulator here at the end of the shot to channel 60, and everything ends at the TV. Now, I think this is going to be more effective with the lights off, so let me try and get my studio lights off. And make sure that uh, my mic cable isn't in the shot. All right, so if I turn on the TV, it's going to be just magically our regular broadcast is on channel three. And that's going to be our color movie. Now, I should note that the Wometco box is not on right now. It's plugged in, but it is not turned on. So, yeah, there's uh, our movie, The Wackiest Wagon Train in the West, which is really just a few episodes of a failed Bob Denver sitcom post-Gilligan's Island strung together and called a movie. Now, if I try and kick this over with the power off to Wometco, we're not going to have a whole lot of luck. Yeah. So, we're back at Channel 3. Let me go ahead and turn on the box here, and you'll notice that nothing happens, and that is proper. So, yeah, I can click it on and off, and not a whole lot shaking right now. But it is on now, and I can, regardless of what's actually running, since everything's direct, I can play with the fine-tuning knob all day long, and it doesn't change a thing. But uh, let's see what's on Wometco right now. Oh, there we go. A Tom Tyler movie, Phantom of the Range. And uh, here's where things kind of go off the rails. So if this were a real proper ongoing live Wometco broadcast, the audio for this movie would be running through the speaker on the Wometco box. And if I cranked up the volume on the TV, it would be it would be music more than likely. Uh, it would be a mix of we'll just call it adult contemporary, kind of a mix of Frank Sinatra, some of the later singers and standards sort of guys up through then current soft rock. And between songs, somebody trying to talk you into subscribing to Wometco Home Theater. But I've got the volume as cranked as I can get on here. And you probably can't hear a thing. I can. There's a hum right now, a buzzy hum. And I'll try and hold my mic up to it. You may or may not hear it because there is noise from the TV and my two VCRs. But yeah, the speaker's alive, but there's just nothing going to it right now. Um, My theory is that the audio was run sideband 
for this stuff. And I don't have the means of transmitting audio on just any old random frequency and trying to dial it in. And even if I did, I'd have to set up a whole nother genuine part 15 broadcast sort of deal and just try and figure out where things are. So I'd have to have a whole separate antenna rig going on here. But uh, things work as far as I'm concerned. I just can't demo that one piece of it. Now, if I were, as I mentioned, to crank up the audio on this, it would be soft rock. But uh, since it's my limited setup, it's free tonight. Free Wimetco. I think there might be a few splices in the print of that movie. So I'll kick back over to the Bob Denver one. So of course we have audio for that. But unfortunately that's all I can demo, but at the same time I think that's more than enough for proof of concept and as close as I can practically get to recreating a period Wometco broadcast. So I'm going to go ahead and call it mission accomplished here. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. I'll talk to you again soon. <laughs>